I'm Jasmine, and these are my parents, Guy and Joe. And this is our home, Free Spirit. Come join us on our adventures. In this video, we sail to and explore the enchanted Shant Islands and meet some of the incredible animals that call these islands home, including a very rare bird. Stay tuned! It was mid-August and anchored just off Tarbot in the Outer Hebrides. We waited for a three-day weather window to visit a group of islands we'd long heard tales about. The islands are quite exposed, with strong tidal streams running through them, so finding calm conditions was crucial. Finally, the weather turned in our favour. We quickly resupplied and set off. Our destination was a group of dramatic, uninhabited islands known as the Shants. Their towering cliffs and turf tops are great for nesting birds and said to be home to 2% of the world's puffin population. We couldn't wait to explore. We were accompanied by storm petrels that danced on the surface. Dolphins passed us by. The wind dropped as the islands loomed out before us. We encountered our first puffins, an encouraging sign. The basalt cliffs with their columnar jointing towered above us as we motored between the islands. Thankfully not encountering any of the fabled blue men of the Minch known to drag sailors to a watery grave. We made it to our destination and anchored in the Bay of Shant, our new home for the next three days. Old remains of early settlements can be found across the islands. It's incredible to think what life here would have been like. With the waters beautifully calm, we set out in our kayaks to explore. We paddled across to the most easterly island. The cliffs and sea caves were awe-inspiring.
It wasn't long before some of the local wildlife paid us a visit. A colony of grey seals observed us as we paddled by. High above us on the cliff tops were thousands of puffin burrows. We pulled ashore for a closer look. The land here is incredibly fertile and covered in lush green grass. Walking along the top felt otherworldly. It was already the second week of August and late in the puffin breeding season. We watched as the adults flitted back and forth with beaks full of sand eels to feed their hungry chicks. There seemed to be no time for them to stop, making them very difficult to film. After being eaten alive by midges, we decided it was time to move on. All across the island were grass ridges, the remnants of raised field systems called lazy beds, where the inhabitants of old would have grown their food. They would have been totally self-sufficient with livestock, vegetables, seabirds, seafood and seal oil. We returned to our kayaks and explored on. For a brief moment the fog cleared and we were bathed in beautiful sunshine. Skewers, the pirates of the bird world, flew above us looking to rob puffins of their catch. Huge white-tailed eagles soared over the islands, searching for prey. Just north of our anchorage is a beautiful archway that we paddled through at high tide. It felt like a gateway to a prehistoric world. Around the entrance was a huge colony of shags. Shags are similar to cormorants but slightly smaller and they also come to the shants to breed.
The rocks were covered with hundreds of them, most of them juveniles that had hatched on the islands earlier this year. Many of them still learning how to catch food. Hidden amongst them, we spotted a very unusual individual. This shag has a rare condition known as leucism. Leucism is quite rare, with only an estimated one in 30,000 birds having it. It was a joy to watch and looked almost ethereal as it swam amongst the others. Back on board, Rowan and I set up a raft for our decoy puffin in the hopes that it would allow us to get closer to these amazing birds and possibly view them underwater. The water was very cold and deep, but it wasn't long before we started to see some wildlife. Soon birds began to flock around us and we were surrounded. However, these weren't puffins but young shags, all of them curious to check us out. Beneath the surface it became clear how well adapted these birds are. Their huge webbed feet helped propel them through the water. Shags are great divers and can dive to 45 metres in search of prey. In the depths just offshore is a dense forest of kelp and other seaweeds, home to large fish and other marine creatures. This habitat makes for the perfect nursery and playground for these birds. It was time to head back to Free Spirit and warm up. Unfortunately, we didn't see any of the puffins, but watching the shags underwater was definitely something I will never forget. Our time on these islands was ticking by, but it was nice to just sit and absorb the atmosphere. The sea mist began to close in.
In the early evening, we decided to explore the western side of the islands. Our time in the shanks was drawing to a close, and we felt sad to be leaving. These islands are some of the most important for seabird colonies in Scotland, with many places in the UK and across the world experiencing steep declines in seabird populations over recent years due to disruption of the food chain caused by pollution, overfishing and climate change. This, on top of the recent outbreak of bird flu, means that it has never been more important to protect our seas and wild islands. As the sun began to set on our last night, thousands of puffins began to fly past us. In the evening light, they gathered together between the islands. It was a beautiful spectacle to witness and the perfect way to say goodbye to these enchanted islands. Please like and subscribe and join us next time as we continue to explore the Hebrides and the west coast of Scotland. If you like these videos and want to help support their production, as well as getting exclusive content and ad-free videos, then click the link in the description and head over to my Patreon account. Thanks for watching. Sunshine on the horizon. This is amazing. Come on. Bikinis and margaritas out now. Get ready. Who landed on you? You had a shag. You got shagged. <clears throat> yes. I'm filming. Okay.